So you write down unit vector is. So what makes this one different? So it says, in Maryland, two armies meet up, right? 1862, so we're well one year into the war by now. Um, so it's one day of fighting, 12,000 died for the Union forces, and Confederates, 13,000 died. A ton of people. Uh, so it's a quote from the book, it says, dead lay three deep in the field, mowed down like grass. So, um, do I have a map on this next one? I don't. Uh, okay, so what makes this one different geographically? This is kind of a, a, a pop quiz question. Geographically, what made this one different than the first battles? Why do you think Union all of a sudden is winning? Sam? Because it's just flat ground. Okay. Well, wait, General no, Robert E. Lee doesn't have any like land masses to kind of ambush. Um, maybe. Not really what I'm looking for. Think about the state. So, yeah. the south area. Okay, so we're leaving oh, our, okay. we're leaving our home field north. advantage we had in Virginia. They knew this, the territory very well. Robert E. Lee was from Virginia. He knew, I mean, he knew that like the back of his hand, so he was able to ambush like crazy. So now they move up to Maryland, and Maryland belongs to north or south. Okay, did slavery exist in Maryland now? No. It did. It did. That's kind of a trick question. So Maryland was one of the four border states, right? So it wasn't part of the Confederate states, so they were kind of moving their way north and fighting north. And so they're kind of losing, Confederates are losing that home field advantage. Freddie. So the next top picture, like, why'd they have them all in a day? Okay. Good question. Okay, so these are all obviously dead people here. Okay, so when literally tens of thousands of people are dying, we know from the video that the beginning of the war, um, pretty much once you were dead, they had to gather all these bodies up and bury them quickly because they immediately started decomposing. So what happens later on, this from the video, what happens later on in the video where, where that changes this? Say to my remember, say. Uh, <coughs> oh. They injected some kind of serum to like slow down the people. Yes. Okay, so the same thing that is still used to embalming. Yeah. That's what you're going to say, John? Yeah, embalming, um, but it's not quite happening like this yet. So eventually, like later on in the war, probably halfway through, they start the embalming process. It's newly invented. So basically that means that they drain that your blood. I know it sounds really gross, but they drain your blood and put um, the, chem or the chemical in your body to help preserve it for a little bit longer so it doesn't immediately start decomposing. And that way they could send your body back home so your family or loved ones could have a funeral for you. But before that, they didn't have that technology, they didn't have that science, so your body immediately, you can close to that, immediately bury you. And that's what, when tons of people are dying, you can't really like dig a bunch of single graves, that would take forever. So, you just do a mass grave. Anthony? Would they only dispose of like, their own side's bodies? Uh, my guess is that each side probably took responsibility for their own uh, men. I'm guessing that. Uh, I, I don't know that for sure, but that is my guess. So. Most important thing you should know about this battle is that it was the bloodiest single day battle of the Civil War. Not only the Civil War, but all of the U.S. wars that we've been in. And we're going to find out an interesting statistic on the next slide. Wait, is that future and that future like? Yes, so this is a painting from the actual Battle of Antietam. Um, this is a modern day photo, I mean, you can tell it's modern day uh, photo, just what the land looks like now, that's actual bridge. So I'm kind of glad that you asked about the picture because that's something to know about Civil War battles is they were all pretty much fought, or at least all the major battles were fought on like rural areas, like wide open fields like you see here, kind of in the background here, um, little creeks. Um, any movie that you see, we're going to watch Glory uh, next week. And you'll see that a lot of the battles are all in like wide open spaces where they all line up. You don't really see a big city fighting like where people are hiding up in buildings and um, rampaging through the cities. Eventually there's kind of something that goes on, Sherman's March Through the Sea, we'll talk about that. But other than that, it's all pretty much wide open spaces. We good? Okay. Real quick statistic. Robert E. Lee, Battle of Antietam, he was the leader of that group. 
uh, the Confederate forces, and then this guy named McClellan, General McClellan, was on the uh, Union side. So, something to know is that a lot of the um, a lot of sources will call this battle a stalemate, even though it's the bloodiest battle. It's why it's the most popular, one of the more popular battles is that tons of people died in this battle on both sides. Some will call it a stalemate. This one, uh, Wikipedia says it's tactically inconclusive uh, as far as who won, but it's a strategic union victory. Um, your book, I believe, says it's a strategic union victory. So some people will say the union actually won this battle. So let's look real quick, I'll let you guys decide. This casualties. We have 10,000 for the south, 12,000 for the north. So the numbers are really close. I mean, there are tons on both sides. But why, you guys tell me, why do you feel that some people think the Union kind of had an advantage in this, in this battle? The Same. numbers of troops that were engaged. Okay, well besides that, let's say that these numbers were exactly the same. So why was it a tactical win? There's a couple reasons, so it's really not a wrong reason. Yeah. Um, okay, that played it. That played a role in the outcome. I feel a bit. Something else. Something else. Uh, the strategy. Uh, okay, strategy in that they. I feel like it was kind of a moral or like a motivator because remember they've been losing battles and so now they've kind of given the South a run for their money. They've kind of put their name on the on the win on the win chart. I guess you could say. But there's also one other thing. You say never mind. Okay, so would we talk about, um, and there's different reasons, it's just this one that I was going to see if you guys would, would bring up. So we said the advantages at the beginning of the lesson. Who had the higher population, north or south? North. North, way more people. Way more supplies, way more railroad, way more resources. So if they have way more resources, way more people, in, specifically in the south, and they lose the same amount of guys, who do you think, which side do you think has more reserves ready to go? North. The North, exactly right. The South, if they lose that many, they don't have as many people to come and say, hey, we need you to sign up or join uh, the military. The North, they say, we have more money, we can pay you to become part, and not only do we have more money, then the South will have way more people that will sign up. So, strategically, it's big, it's a moral victory for them. That was a motivator. Uh, this was very interesting since more soldiers were killed and wounded than were killed in all these wars. American Revolution, War of 1812, and the Mexican-American War combined. So all three of those wars we've talked about in this class at one point. So in this one day, more people were killed in this one day than all three of those wars combined. I think that's pretty crazy, huh? Um, so, something to think about. Um, that's... Um, so this, obviously you're not writing down, this is an interactive map that is in your book, and it kind of wraps up all the beginning battles that we've just talked about, and there's three quiz questions. So let's try this really quick. The point of this is I want to kind of show you the map of where these battles are being fought, so you can kind of picture in your mind uh, what part of the country they're at. Um, so let's see this. It says the North strategy was largely based on blank of the Confederacy. So do you think the strategy was the history of the Confederacy, geography, or politics? So who says history? Who says geography? Well done, let's pick that. You're correct. Okay, so that will bring up... Okay. So, blue line, you can see from the key here, that's Union forces coming down from Washington, D.C. See, it doesn't say D.C., but it's Washington, D.C. The red explosion means that Confederates win the battle. So this is where Bull Run is. So I want you guys to see this really quick. Uh, we obviously know this is Maryland, the purple area here, Chesapeake Bay. What state is the green? Uh, Virginia. Someone say Virginia? It's Virginia. That's right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does say here. Um, I'm edit that part out. Uh, okay, so there's Virginia. So what I want you guys to know is here's Washington, D.C., here's Richmond. So the first three battles, remember we say Groundhog's Day, uh, Lincoln keeps trying the same thing. He wants to get the war over really quick and take over Richmond so he can control the capital. That's a big point. Yeah, you can, you can turn it off. Um, 